In the next video is an action song for Dancing with the Dark and I want to Joan Aiken, my feelings about ghosts. Born in a haunted house, Jeet's house in Rye, and living in another, the Hermitage in Petworth, I feel it unfair that neither of the spectral occupants, <coughs> Samuel Jeet in the first and a black monk in the second, has ever seen fit to make himself known to me in person, or not quite. When I was a child, the presence of Samuel Jeet a 17th century astrologer could sometimes be felt about the drowsy high selling dreams of the house he had built. Vases inexplicably fell off mental pieces. My father's typewriter could be heard to chatter to itself at night, and it certainly did take a terrific effort of will for me to cross a big dark double room which was my father's study in order to get to my own bedroom on the far side of it, last thing at night. After our family quitted the house in 1948, I have heard stories about it. One of the later owners was working in an upstairs room which he used as his office. Incidentally, the room where I was born, when he heard a step go past him up the stair next to his open door, knowing that, apart from himself, the house was supposed to be empty, he promptly phoned the police, who had come at once, but found nobody on the upper floor. The intruder could not possibly have left, for there was only one way down. It would be the ghost, said the police. We're quite used to that. Rye is full of them. Incidentally, Jeet's house is now a and b What are ghostly happenings? Why do they happen? Wires get crossed, perhaps. The boss of a friend of ours left his office early one day and went home, calling at a fish and chip shop on the way. Close to the fish and chippery was a phone box, and as he passed it, the phone rang. He picked up the receiver. It was his own secretary at the office, telling him about an urgent job. By mistake, instead of his home number, she had dialed his national insurance number next to it on the index car card, which happened to be the number of the call box. My present house, the Hermitage, is, as I said, supposed to be haunted by a black monk. Neighbours have seen him on the path beyond our garden wall, but I haven't been so lucky. We bought the house as a total ruin, which had stood empty for 12 years and spent a year completely renovating it, from the hole in the roof to the swamp in the cellar. The builders' workmen were not too keen on some parts, but particularly two little attic rooms which I had made into one and used as my study. After the job was finished, I made an appearance on a local television program and talked about the problems of converting a listed building. A couple of weeks later, I stopped in the street in Chichester by a woman who said, I saw you on TV. My sister used to clean for the lady who lived in that house before you. She said she often used to see the black monk. He'd come in one door and go out through another. Unfortunately, in our building operations, we have blocked up several doors and opened others in different places. It may be that we disrupted the black monk's one-way system. At all events, he has never appeared. What I did think I saw for several years after we moved in was a female figure in the garden. After 12 years' disuse, this was in a terrible state, overgrown with brambles, nettles, ivy, bindweed, and wild hop. As I doggedly scythed and hacked and mowed through the wildness, I would quite often think I saw this distant figure watching my efforts with a kind of amused pity and contempt. Was she a very expert gardener? I asked a neighbour's husband, who had once known the former occupant. He laughed. Not she, he said. All she liked was birds. They would never have a phone in the house in case it scared the birds. After her husband died, she wouldn't sleep alone in the house. Went down every night to sleep at the Swan Hotel. But she used to come back every day and sit on a bench in the garden. One night she never came back to the swan and the next day they found her sitting on the bench dead. My neighbour went on to tell various tales of the couple's ineptitude about the garden. How the husband had once started sawing off the branch against which his ladder was propped and had been interrupted by a caller just in time. I am a fairly inefficient gardener myself and it occurred to me that the wife might be watching hopefully to see if I committed any such cack-handed act. I have not seen her so often of late. Perhaps she has given up on that and gone to occupy herself elsewhere. When my mother died, Martin Armstrong, my stepfather, said that he felt her presence about the house for a week or so. Then he supposed she got her bearings and took off. Martin, one of the most rational and sceptical people I've ever met, had had several ghostly experiences. When young, he lived in the haunted Pelly Tower in the village of Corbridge. Heavy breathing could be heard in one room. Not only humans, but also the family parrot were made nervous by this sound. And in his grandparents' house, there was a corner where... Sometimes an invisible presence made the family dog growl and bristle. But Martin's best ghostly happening was in a train between Winchelsea and Hastings, where he suddenly realised he was facing a rather nasty little boy in an eaten jacket who was sitting six inches above the seat. 
Very slowly, the black and red pattern of the upholstery began to appear through the boy, who then vanished. Martin came to the conclusion that the boy, a ghost, must have been sitting on the lap of some person who was still alive. Martin himself wrote several very hair-raising ghost stories. My favourite, the pipe smoker, takes place in the sitting room of the cottage where I lived from age five on and where my brother David still lives. The cottage is very old, but never to us felt in the least haunted. The sitting room, however, downstairs and back was a modern addition built by the old lady who sold the house to Martin. It had a bow window divided into five lights, and at night, if the curtains were not drawn, you could, by standing in the middle of the room, see five reflections of yourself. Martin, who smoked players' navy cut cigarettes in those days, wrote a story about a man looking up as he lit, cigarette, lit a cigarette to see that four of his reflections had done likewise, but the fifth had defiantly lit a pipe. I won't spoil the story for possible future re readers by giving me the denouement, but it was very mysterious and unexpected and made a deep impression on me when I first came across it. Now it occurs to me wonder if we make stories up and then wait for them to happen. After his own death, Martin himself was seen in his study, the room directly above the five windowed sitting room. I'd rather not sleep in that room again if you don't mind a visitor told my brother. The old gentleman comes in and potters about. Perhaps my ex neighbour in the garden Perhaps my ex neighbour out in the garden is waiting for me to go out and sit down beside her on the bench. I rather like to think so. Sometime I will write that story. And that ends that instalment for dancing in the dark.